I kind of wanted to extend this out and see if we had a move, and we kind of do, kind of not. Uh, but anyway, um, here's where we are with Bitcoin. I'm going to go through the history of this uh, so you guys can focus more on the long term of what I'm looking at and what my plans are for the summer. I'm kind of be going to be re repeating myself in the sense of what I'm doing because nothing has really changed. I still have this buy down here at 45k. Um, this is where we ran up from here, this top end here in the mid 60,000 range. We created a uh, pullback here very fast, then it triangulated, broke back down, uh, made a stronger triangle down here uh, before uh, bouncing and then breaking back to the upside. Now it went over and uh, never got down to this level. This is the key level. And I'm gonna show you what is likely to happen statistically, but I'm gonna give you both scenarios. And I'm gonna show you how this can correlate to back in 2017. Uh, so you guys have a good um, uh, retrospective on the past and possibly what could occur in the future. Because a lot of things are cyclical in nature. They repeat themselves, right? And um, uh, there are certain numbers, certain things that you can't see, that I can see, that are likely to repeat themselves. Uh, the magnitude is different. Uh, I will tell you that the marketplace now is more varied. Uh, it's not just the retail guy pushing the prices of uh, crypto. It's, uh, and we could tell because of the prices are so much higher, right? We're in the 50,000 range. We're not in 5,000 or 7,000 anymore. So the market is uh, grown uh, greatly. Um, and, uh, you know, we have to try to get a good sense of what the volatility is going to be. Uh, compared to what it once was, uh, because the market dynamics have changed. But anyway, let's go over and take a look at this. So recently we had this move down here and then bounced up and then we broke back up to the upside. Uh, this right here, this blue line became support. All right, anywhere between the bottom of this to the top of that. When it broke back up above this trend line here, uh, you can see how it, it kind of slides down with it and then hits this area here doesn't go much under and then bounces up and then we have our you know resistance which is this red line right here acting as resistance and that's where we are right now but now I'm going to show you the cone of truth the cone of truth uh, and this can go flip two different ways I'm going to show you the negative first uh, this cone of truth right here. This is your resistance zone, okay? So this high and this high over here, and as well right over here, there's three points, three different highs. One, two, three, okay, that we're focused on. This is your zone of resistance. Makes sense? It's very clear. One, two, three highs. Nothing to think about. Now, if we average that out from the first high and so forth, we can see that this is our starting point right here where we're kind of pulling back from. Now, the reason we had the up move and so forth is because, ironically enough, you had Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live, and he wasn't a real help to crypto. He let them go over and uh, script uh, kind of negative scripting towards it, calling uh, what he does a hustle. And that's not true. That's kind of derogatory in those the, the he, him allowing that is just uh, because of their lack of understanding of what crypto is um, is kind of kind of sad. He, he became a, a bitch or excuse my language a punk, and uh, he you know he should have never agreed to that scripting and so forth. I mean he clear he's a very smart person, so him acting like a little um, you know wuss and letting them go over and do that not cool um unless that's what he believes which is kind of pathetic if he does but anyway doesn't matter um let's look at the real technicals of what's there this is your resistance though all right this is what's proven to be what's likely to occur uh this is our trend line from below we're gonna the breakout back up here is really a one two three and you know, it, it stops right in this area up here. 
And now we draw a trend line between this point down here and that point right there. Now, if it's able to break back below 50 to 900, um, then you could probably see a pretty quick and rapid move down to that area where I want to buy. And this is summertime. This would make sense, right? This is where we would be looking for prices to go lower because um, this correlates more to the stock market, you know, buying and selling. And right now, uh, the tech stocks are getting whacked. Um, uh, maybe not today. Maybe the Dow Jones is up. But a lot of tech stocks are getting whacked because I, I think there's a few interesting, you know, things like uh, the Microsoft, uh, the divorce, uh, Bill, Bill Gates. So there are some negatives in the marketplace that are likely to occur. And they happen between May and July. And it's very normal for pullbacks to occur in this area because it's mostly the, the way the hedge funds work and their counting that they do. And it's just a cyclical nature that you're more likely to have a down move, um, especially after new highs and, and an up move uh, during the winter time. So your statistics go up for that. Now, uh, that's not always the case. Uh, there are times uh, where that wouldn't be the case. But for now, statistically, the odds are higher that we'll get downward pricing. And that's fine. Uh, so what we're looking is that we get this downward shift. And uh, we can go as low as the 35,000 and maybe even the 30. Uh, area and that's going to be around 50% of the moves to, from the highs right down here uh, which would it just it's logical it makes sense and uh, you know that would be a great buying opportunity so I'm going to be loading up during the summer if I can get that pullback down here but what happens if I don't get that pullback what if we flip to the upside and instead go 30 above right let's see and we go back up to this trend line up here that is also a possibility uh, it would require a breakout above these highs right here and um, uh, then continuation upwards and if that occurs I would be looking for a, a strong you know move that goes directly to the trend line and above so this area up here, all the way up to 95K, uh, would be my primary target. Uh, and uh, that would indicate that this market doesn't care. And there's a few things out there that kind of point to this being a possibility. And I'm going to show you one of them. This has to do with the, the amount of Bitcoin out there. There are... It's hard. It's not always easy to tell, but there are certain metrics that I can use that tells me the amount of supply out there. And right now, the amount of supply is very low. All right, and it's dwindling. So there's not a lot of movement. Uh, you know, uh, downside movement, or people are holding on to their coins. And uh, so, uh, the less supply, the more likely you're. You know. Uh, going to get moves higher, or at least they're, they stabilize. Um, so as we've seen in the past, everything gets bought and the amount of supply out there gets diminished. And this could be from a few factors. And this, this is fundamentally occurring that the hedge funds are just buying and holding. Then uh, supply is uh, dwindling. And when you do get that movement upwards, it could be pretty, uh, quick and so forth. I mean, it's already demonstrated itself on other coins like uh, our friend Ethereum, which has made new highs just today. A uh, matter of fact, if we go back here, it's trading up to the 4100. Uh, 4200 would be a one-to-one -one basis on, um, I think you heard me say that before, for uh, Bitcoin to Ethereum. But everybody's extremely excited about Ethereum. And uh, so that's one thing that is, uh, you know, keeping a, a lot of people are buying Ethereum uh, because they want alternatives to Bitcoin. And that could be a lot of hedge funds, just uh, they're hedging their bets uh, and they're um, diversifying their portfolios. And that would make sense because uh, they have to. Uh, that's just... Uh, 
diversification is one of the rules, the golden rules, if you ever heard me, that I follow. And so today, uh, that's, you know, what they're going to do. But getting back to Bitcoin, um, you know, so what are we looking for here? Well, we're going to focus on this right here. This is our key number at 52. So if we break back below this trend line here and we go back under 56, let's say, and uh, we're kind of pulling back from this resistance zone, um, then we want to see this number down here. If this breaks, then we're going to look for that 45K and under. Uh, end of the world, people are going to be all over the TV telling that it's a crypto, it was a big scam, and it was a hustle, and all kinds of other bullshit. And we're going to the floor, and at the same time, all these hedge funds and so forth are going to be buying as it goes lower. <laughs> so, and you know, it would make sense to go into the, the, um, the summertime. But what happens if it doesn't? Like I was saying, what if it doesn't and it keeps going higher and we break through this? Well, this is our scenario to the upside, is that we would get that move up to maybe up to 95K, somewhere in that area, right? Under 100,000, 95, 96. Uh, that would be a relative move. So we're either looking for the move to go up to here or we're looking for the move to go down to there. Um, and that's where I would be loading up into the summertime. So we've got about a 30K move from this area here, up or down. Um, so if that makes sense to you, uh, it, it rationalizes with numbers, both to the up and down you know, scenario. Um, and it, it comes to uh, the 30,000 to 30 to five, somewhere in that range. So um, it, 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 everything correlates to that. So I, I like the numbers and I, I kind of, again, I, I'm, uh, you know, not buying like crazy. So I, I kind of think we're going to get more of a pullback for now. And then later on in the year, we would look towards the winter time after summer, after July that will get the bigger move upwards to our grand target of 118,894. Uh, and then from there, we're going to see, we're going to see if we uh, continue higher and get even more, because from there, the statistics say this is the minimum. Uh, and then the max could be somewhere in the 240, 260 range. Uh, that is a possibility. Uh, that would be, you know, the the high end, uh, let's say. This is your minimum target. So we're going to see if we can get that by the end of the year. Uh, towards the end of the year uh, would make sense on from July all the way on out. So the volatility could increase greatly. Now let's go back into the history of Bitcoin. I'm going to show you past trading that I've had. And uh, throughout back in 2017, to 2018. Uh, now, this was a time where Bitcoin was trading under, it was actually in the 2000 range and even lower than that. It doesn't show it on this right here on this chart. Uh, it doesn't go back far enough. Let's see if uh, anybody else does. Let's see which ones we have. Mm -hmm. Can't use a four hour, that's for sure. Let's go by a weekly. Ignore that. No, I'm not going to get the data that I need. Uh, because we had, before we had this run up to 20K, I think Ethereum would be a better one because that would show that. Uh, I'll show you the history of this. We see where we are right now. We're in the near the above 4K, right around that 4,200. But back in the day when Ethereum, I actually had this between 11 to, to $14 a coin. And that was back in 2015 and I just held on to it. It was, you know, nothing happened to it. And then back in uh, 2017, the summer, funny enough, right when? In May, 
where we are right here. We had a big volatility increase. Boom, boom, boom. Now let's do this as a daily. Let's do it as a one day so you can see. We had a big volatility increase. Where am I here? This was the old buy zones. Okay, so this was May of 2017. All right, it went up, it had a big move. Uh, we were excited because it was, uh, it, you know, these 11 to $14 coins that I had uh, broke out and went up to the 50. So it's a five times the value of it. And I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. But, you know, um, uh, it wasn't a giant size investment for me. So I, I just let it run. And then in May of 2017, we got a spike up, pulled back. And then it kind of just drifted, 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 drifted in the 80 range. And uh, then it had its big move up. And that was around, what was it, 20th, the 19th? Somewhere in that, uh, the, the in May. And it just spiked up and just kept going. It had a big pullback here, but then spiked back up and kept going. And then it ran all the way to the $400 level. And I sold up here. I thought I was the king of the world, da da da, da. Then it pulls all the way back to under 200, under 50% of the range, of its range from here. I started buying again, because you see this spike right down here? Anywhere from this point on, if you see this right here with these candles, uh, this was a great buying, even from this, this point right here. If we look right here. So I started buying it again, I got a great discount. And everything within right there, let's change the color on this to blue. And so you can see, boom, 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 boom. And okay. Everything from here. And relative terms you want there, all the way down to here. Uh, this is your support, your main support, this whole area right here. Um, and this is where you would start buying right there. So you can see where it's supported, boom, 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 goes up, goes back near the highs, pulls back again down to this area, then kind of meanders around, and before it made its bigger move up to the 14. Uh, so I want you to think about that. This is the way the price action worked, and it became very... Uh, it was very loose, it was, so you had wide ranging ranges and profitability was ridiculous, it was stupid, I, I won't deny, it was stupid. And I was able to turn, you know, relatively small amounts of money to me, uh, you know, because I'm from the currency space, I'm not from the crypto, and back then I was like, holy crap, look at this movement. I was like, this is fantastic, the volatility and the liquidity is just, wow, uh, I'm gonna be trading crypto. and. Uh, from the summer of, uh, from this point on, uh, my focus became all about crypto. And the profitability was just ridiculous. Uh, this was another one that I had, had a pattern that goes all the way back to 600 and under. And here, Spanish cross, I'll probably tell you about that in the future, about how that works. Uh, it's not in technical analysis books because uh, most people don't, mathematically calculate numbers like that. But anyway, I'll, I'll go on to that in the future. Um, this was a great short, had a pattern up here, and it pulls all the way back down to here before making a, going up and retracing to here, but it was still in a downtrend. After this, this was your blowout. Uh, this was where I was a naked short, where not only did I sell everything, I went over and shorted the market and had risk, and I was targeting numbers at, from 600 and under. And this is from people that were in the group from years ago that would be able to tell you this is, was my plan. And then this was your support buy zone. Uh, got our bounce selling up here. Da, 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 da. And then we broke. We had just tons of trades. And my ROI for that period of time um, was off the charts. Uh, and uh, it just was ridiculous. Um, great times, uh, but everything was clear technically. Uh, the selling, uh, I had, I, I knew that this was going to pull back hard uh, from this point and the moves that we had. But this all started with a move from here 
in the, in the summer in May. Something you have to say, um, you know, this is a possibility. The volume metrics are similar, not the same, but similar. So this is a possibility. Uh, on a percentage basis, we already had a pretty big move, but so did back here when we ran from 11 all the way up to eight, you know, 80s, eight, uh, $80 and so forth, and, and even to the 50s. That was a big move, but it became bigger, right? Then it went up to around 100, and then it went all the way up to 400. So, uh, you know, the don't just see uh, the ability for, uh, you know, uh, moves to be non-elongated or, you know, truncated to a certain percentage. They can and often will expand rapidly. And there's no way to, uh, you know, to know where tops are going to be. And just like right now, we don't know where the top's going to be, but we have to rationalize what's there. It's a little difficult because, again, the market dynamics are different. Now you have hedge funds in it, and, uh, you know, there are some indicators that the supply. But number one, I don't see any patterns that tell me to start shorting. Okay, I don't have anything here. Uh, going back into time where we are right here that tells me oh yeah I got to start selling um, you know I don't have a topping pattern I can't classify this area here as a uh, there's nothing technically that matches the market is uh, bifurcated that means it's split off into different realms things are not matching up one with the other Back in 2017, everything made perfect sense. I knew exactly that we were going to get a pullback from uh, at some point, um, and it was likely we were going to get a pullback. You should never say you know exactly, but I was very, very confident. Right here, I'm not confident at all. I think that we can go much higher, um, unfortunately, because I would like us to have a pullback. But um, So that's why I'm giving you the scenario, and I have to tell you that of it going up to the 95 as a possibility um, from here and maybe even higher. Uh, we could get stupid numbers that go all the way up to the 240,000 level. And if supply really shrinks and these numbers are correct, and you know, um, there's all kinds of numbers that I use. Uh, we got certain types of crossovers and the on chain analysis and the realized capitalization that calculations that I use in the background, if they come to fruition and they're showing as the lack of supply being out there, um, then we can get some violent upward moves. Uh, so the froth that people are talking about being, you know, prices being really high, they might be on certain altcoins, but they're not on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very steady. It's not shown any ridiculous upside moves on a percentage basis. It's just been trending solidly. I would be looking for patterns and great deal of volatility to indicate that we have some uh, looseness in the market. Now, I've not seen that yet. So, you know, I've got to just wait. I've got to say that rationalized uh, throughout the rest of the year, uh, this is my minimum target. I, I also have to go over and plan, and here's the key of this video, that I might be buying, if we break out upwards here, we hold this area, this 52 to 56 area, we hold it and we keep going higher, I might have to buy high. And it has happened before, I'll, I'll buy uh, stocks or uh, a currency at a high because I believe the calculations to the upside warrant it. it, it uh, you know, uh, simply, we break this level right up here, I'm gonna be buying and getting into the marketplace and targeting the 95 and above number, you know, um, anywhere from 86, 87, somewhere in here to the 95 uh, short term. And then maybe we'll get a pullback back down to here, back to the 60,000 range, maybe even all the way down to um, here. But ultimately, we're looking for this target up to the 118,894. Uh, that's your minimum target for the rest of the year. 
Um, so there you go. That's my whole plan. Uh, the only thing that we are in is right now, and I can't predict, is that for now, we are in resistance. We're in July. And once we end July and the weakness is over, I want to be fully invested in crypto and waiting for the bull run. That goes all the way up to there. So that's my whole plan. Nothing has changed, and I've kind of repeated this. But I think I've given you a really long video here that goes back into the history of why and some of the dynamics that um, go along with this. And, uh, you know, it's um, a lot of it you can't see it on chart, and I can. And that's just because I've done this for such a long period of time, crazily enough. <laughs> but, okay. Um, video's gone on way too long. So what we're looking at right now is we're looking to see if we break back below this there or if we break back above here. And then you're going to start seeing me get into buying frenzy and start buying everything. Um, Ethereum doesn't seem to want to quit and it just might snap back uh, your diminished supply on Bitcoin. And if that happens, then we're off to the races to the upside. Uh, other than that, uh, that's the update. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a super long one and it's full of a bunch of uh, real clarity for you. And I, I yeah, I, I think it's this one's super educational, I would say. I, uh, so next time.